Spawn Camp here, and this video will be improving our arcade car controller with better collision. And if you stick around, afterwards we'll add in some effects and animation to give it a bit more polish. For this video, we'll use a few assets from the Unity Asset Store. We got the Barrier and Traffic Cone Pack by Sabri Oz, Modular Track by Evgeny Nikolsky, and Stylized Hypercars by Sam RK. And I think we're going to use this here Bugatti. So back in Unity, we have a 3D plane called Ground, and this is assigned to a layer that we called Ground. We have our trusty off-brand Camaro from our last video. I have a game object called Stage, and this contains a track that's set up using all the prefabs from the modular track asset. And I went through and disabled the mesh collider on all these pieces. The reason being that you'll see that the edge of the track has these humps and our motor sphere doesn't really play well with them. So instead you'll see without them that the car works smoothly again and that's because the sphere is now rolling and ray casting onto the ground plane beneath the actual track. Next up we have barriers. These won't budge so we have them marked as static objects. And finally I just have a quick and dirty camera system. This uses Thin Machine and can be installed through the package manager. Once installed you can find this drop down and create a new virtual camera. You can assign the target to the follow and look at fields and then just play around with the offset and the camera settings until you get the look you want. So now let's recycle the old car. You can use this car to continue the tutorial if you wish, but I'm going to use this as a prop. First we'll rename this to Rigid Body Car, and then we're going to delete the motor sphere from it, and we'll leave the car model B. On the main root object, we'll go ahead and remove the car controller component. Next we'll add a Rigid Body component, and we'll crank the mass up to 5. Then we'll add a Box Collider, I'll get into orthographic view real quick to make this easier. Then click the edit collider button. We want our collider just to be a bit above the tires. And we can hold alt when we do this to drag both at the same time. And that looks good enough for me. So once that's finished, we'll just move it out of the way, lift it up some and test to make sure it falls to the ground. awesome sauce. So since the Camaro we've hit Elon Musk status so let's get ourselves a supercar to drop in here. We'll create a new empty game object and call this new car. Make sure to reset the transform so our positions at 0, 0, 0. Then we'll want to navigate to our prefabs of our hypercars asset. We're gonna grab this first one which I believe is the Bugatti and just drop it straight on top of our new car empty. We'll right click this and go to prefab and unpack completely because we don't want any changes we make to this to affect the actual asset. We'll rename it to car model and let's just make sure that none of these parts have colliders on them. Looks like they don't so we're good. I'm going to make a detour and add some color to our car just by dragging on the correct textures. And for the lights you'll see that I have a mission ticked and this will add a little glow and make it pop a little more if we add any kind of post processing. Now let's continue our car. We're going to right click on the root object. We're going to create a new 3D object. This is going to be a sphere. We're going to rename it motor. Let's go over in the inspector. Over here we're going to add a new component. It's going to be a rigid body. For our mass we're going to use 5. We'll use 4 for drag. Our angular drag we'll use 0 0.01. Interpolation, we're going to want this to be interpolate so our motion stays smooth. And on collision detection, I found that continuous speculative works the best. So back in the scene view, you'll see that our sphere is not where it needs to be. And we can't move it up because you'll see that it changes our Y position and we want this to remain at zero. What we can do is grab the whole car root object, move it up so the sphere is above the ground. Now we can click the car model and we'll drag the model down to fit. So now that it's in place, we can click the motor and then we can disable the mesh renderer because we don't need to see this. Now I'm going to take a sidestep and set up my virtual camera. It's easy as just dragging in our car object. With that done, we can select our new car object and we're going to add a new component. And this is going to be our car controller script from the last video. I've added in this float called align to ground time and I set the normal drag variable to be private. Instead, in our start function, we're just going to set the normal drag to whatever we have assigned in our motor sphere rigid body. You can find a link to the script in the description, but it's not much different than the old one. We still get our input, we rotate the car if it's grounded, set the car to the sphere's position. We still raycast downwards onto our ground layer to rotate our car using this quaternion. Now here's a bit of a difference. Instead of just setting the rotation, we use a slurp with a new align to ground time variable multiplied with time.delta time. So without it, your car just snaps to the ground. 
but this we can modify this variable and give it somewhat of a smoother look. Then we still calculate our forward backwards direction. Now instead of an if statement we do the drag the same way and still add our forces in the fixed update. With that crash course let's set up the script like our old car. We'll drag in our motor sphere into the rigid body slot. We'll use 200 for the speed, 100 for reverse, 150 for our turning speed. Our ground layer mask should be set to ground. We'll use 1 for the modified drag and 20 for the aligned ground time. And we're off to the races. So now what the video is really about, the collision. First I reckon we'll need a collider for collisions. We'll create an empty under our car, call it car collider. Our position should be at 0, 0, 0. We want to go ahead and add a box collider. And then we want to add a rigid body. And we'll need a rigid body because we'll connect this to our sphere using a fixed joint. So add one of those as well. Since we're here, we'll go ahead and drag the motor sphere into the connected body slot of our joint. On the rigid body, we'll keep mass at 1, but we'll set all the drag to 0 since our sphere is going to control all that. Also turn off gravity and make sure that the interpolation and the collision settings are the same as our sphere. Lastly, let's edit our box collider. We want this one to extend to only the bottom of the car. So we should have our sphere poking out the bottom. So before we go further, we're going to fix this problem that we have where our motor and our car collider now share the same space. So let's go fix that with some layers. We're going to add two new layers and we're going to call one a motor and one a car. And we can click out of here and for the motor, I'll sign it to the motor layer. And on our car collider, I'll sign it to the car layer. Then to make the magic work, we need to go to edit and we'll go to project settings, go up here to physics. And then if we scroll to the bottom, we'll find this collision matrix. And what we want is the car not to collide with itself. We want the motor to not collide with itself. And we want the car to not collide with the motor, most importantly. Spawn camp here, but from the future. Yeah, there's also an issue where the car is going to slam into the ground. So go ahead and turn off the collision between the car and the ground too. That way our sphere handles the collision of the ramp and our car collider will just mimic the car. So in the current project, it's right here. So we're halfway there at this point, I figure. So the next step is, if you remember, we detached the motor sphere from our car object. And since the car collider is now connected to that sphere, we should detach it as well. So let's open up our car controller. And this is pretty straightforward. We have a public rigid body, car RB. And then in our start function, we'll say the same thing as we did with our sphere, car RB .transform .parent equals null. And then back inside the project, we'll just drag in our car collider rigid body into this slot. Now the car collider should detach like our sphere. So we do want this separate from the car, but we still want it to rotate with the car. But since this is a physics object, instead of rotating it every frame, we'll do this rotation very last at the end of our fixed update. So with the rigid body, we can use this nifty function called move rotation, and we want to use transform.rotation to match our car object. So save and back into Unity. It's working now, except we have this little tremble. Since we're only rotating this through code we just wrote, we can lock the rotation of the collider's rigid body on all the axes, and this should fix it up. So with all that said and done, you can see that we have collision. But there's one problem I can see. The rigid bodies that we're crashing into have that jitter that we've seen before. So this is not a problem with our car, but the rigid bodies instead. We can just make sure that our interpolation and our collision detection are set the same as our actual car. And we can do that to the rest of the rigid bodies. So now with the car collision objects having the same physics setting, we get decent collision and some smooth movements. So that's pretty much the underlying system done. Now I'm going to add some extra juiciness. We'll start by making these tires spinny. If we expand out the car model, you'll see that we have four separate wheels and each one's facing the same direction. That's good for us. We can spin all these at once using one script and a couple lines of code. So on our new car game object, we want to create a new script called wheel controller. At the top, we want a public game object array. And this is just going to be a group of game objects. And we want to call these wheels to rotate. And then we need a public float called rotation speed. In the update, we'll get a float called vertical axis equal to input.getAxisRaw. 
and we want the vertical axis and this is how we'll know what direction to spin the wheels. We'll use a for each loop to go through the wheels in our collection and we're going to call the variable wheel and it's going to be in the wheels to rotate collection. And then we can rotate each wheel by saying wheel dot transform dot rotate and we want to put in XYZ and the space is going to be space dot self. And the way these wheels are set up, we want to rotate on the X axis. So we'll just change this to time dot delta time. Then we'll multiply this by our vertical axis to get our direction. And then we want to multiply that by rotation speed. You can save that and go back into Unity. Now on the wheel controller script, we have this empty array. So an easy way to do this is to go up here and lock the inspector. So now we can just select all the wheels at once and drag them straight into the wheels to rotate. Now we just need to give this rotation speed a value and I think 1000 is a good number. And now our wheels will spin depending on whether we're going forward or backwards. Alrighty next we're going to do steering and we're going to use animation so make sure we have our animation and animator window open. So we don't want to affect the code that's already spinning our wheels. So we'll make parent objects around the wheel and animate it instead. An easy way to do this is to right click the wheel, create a new empty game object, call this container, drag it out from the wheel and then drag the wheel into the container. And this allows us to make sure the actual wheel is zeroed out inside the container. Do the same for the other wheel. And make sure at the end that we have two game objects in the same route and not one accidentally parented to the other because that will mess things up. After that setup, we can go to our new car game object. And I'm sensing something's wrong. Oh yeah, let's, let's unlock our inspector. I always forget about that. Okay, so now let's go back to our new car game object. We want to create a new animation clip and we'll name it straight. In the animation window, we can click record. We'll select one of the containers we made and we just want a keyframe where it currently is. So we're wanting to rotate this on the Y axis. So here we'll just delete the zero that's there and enter a new one. And do the same for the other container. And we have two keyframes so we can stop the animation. Right click here and we're going to create another animation. We'll call this left. So we'll hit record. We'll grab one of these containers and rotate it to where we'd want it if we were turning left. And then we do the same for the other container. And when we're finished we can stop the recording. Then we're going to right click create one more. And this is going to be right. And we'll do the exact opposite. So we did negative 45. So we're going to do positive 45. So we can stop the recording. We're going to click here and change this back to straight because this is going to be our starting position. Now we can collapse the model back up because we're done with it. And we need to select our new car and open up our animator window. To control our animation, we'll set up some parameters. Click the plus and add two bulls. One going left and one going right. Over here, your first animation should be the default. Right click and make a transition to left. Click the transition arrow and we want to untick exit time. At the bottom we'll add our transition. It's going to be going left is true. So right click here and transition back to straight. Click the transition, untick exit time. And the only way we're here is if going left was true. So to go back we want going left is false. Now we'll do the same thing on the right side. So we'll transition into right if going right is true. Transition back to straight if going right is false. Now we can make this work with code. So let's go back to our new car game object and we're going to put this in our wheel controller script. At the top we'll declare a private animator called anim. And since this is on the same game object in our start function we'll just cache it with anim equals get component animator. In the update we'll need a new float and this is going to be our horizontal axis and it's going to be equal to input.getAxisRaw but this time horizontal. Below our for each statement we'll have a few if checks to see which way we're steering. So if horizontal axis is greater than zero, we're turning right. Else if horizontal axis is less than zero, we're turning left. And if neither of those are true, we'll say that we're going straight. So to turn right, we're going to set our going left bull to false first. So we'll say anim.set bull going left false. And then we're going to set our going right bull to be true. And then if we're going left, we want to set our going right bull to false first and then set our going left bull to true. And then if we're going straight, then both of these bulls are gonna be false. 
And if we were to save that and hop into Unity, we'll see that we got steering. So I added some lights right fast. For the headlights, it's just a spot light facing forward with a very large spot angle and the shadow top set to soft shadows. For the underglow, I just rotated the same light downwards and set this one to have no shadows. Alright, for the skid effects, we're going to use trail renderers. To set these up, create a new empty game object on the car, call this trails, and then we're going to make a new one under it, and we're going to start with the left trail. So get this lined up to the back tire pretty good. Then in the inspector, we're just going to add a new trail renderer component. Let's drag this anchor point down to set the size to 0.2. For the time, I'm going to try to enter 1. Then we can set the color. Click the bottom left and set this color to black. Do the same for the bottom right. Then the top right is opacity. We want it to fade to almost zero. And let's just lower the left side a bit too. I'll change the time to actually be one. And in the materials we can find and set this to default line. We want cast shadows to be turned off and also receive shadows to be unticked. Now you can give it a little drag around the scene to see if you're happy with it. And you can just duplicate this and use this for our right trail. We'll just rename it, drag it over to the right side of the car. Now we set the rest up in code, so just go to our new car. Let's open our wheel controller back up. At the top we'll declare another array, but this time of trail renderers and call it trails. Then below our other if statement, we'll say if horizontal axis is not equal to zero. So if we're turning in any direction, we want skids. So we can use another for each statement, name the variable trail and collection trails. And we'll say if you're steering, set each trail dot emitting to equal true. Else we do the same for each loop and set them to false. So we can save this and go back into Unity. We have this new array of trails, so we can lock our inspector again. Go over here, grab both these trails, and just drag them in. If you hit play, now we have trails. So with that, we're moving on to the final and my favorite effect, impacts. First, you want to create an empty object in the scene. Name it whatever you want for your particle. Then we're going to add component and particle system. Mine's already set up, so let me just disable this car to get out of the way so I can show you. I'm not going to go through setting it up, but I will expand everything so you can pause and copy if you want. There's a duration of 3, I changed the size and speed a bit. For the emission rate over time, we set that to 0. We instead use a burst of about 20 particles. The shape's been set to a sphere. The most important part about this system is collision. I enabled this and set the type to world. And finally, our material is just set to the default particle cool thing about this one is once you have it set up you can duplicate it as a child and tweak the settings a bit and they both will go off at the same time when we spawn the parent. So with your effect finished you can just drag it into the project window to create a prefab and then we're going to delete it from the scene. Now let's bring the car back and open it up to find our car collider. This is where we'll detect the collision for the effects. So let's create a new script and call it collision effects. Then we'll double click and let it open. This will be a short script. We need a public game object and this is a reference to our hit prefab we just made. We can nuke the start and update. The only thing we'll need is on collision enter function. And this gives us a collision called other that we can use later. So on collision we want to instantiate our hit effect. The position will use other.getContact and it's asking for which one so we'll type 0 because that's the first collision that happens. Then we'll say dot point and for the rotation we'll use quaternion.identity for no rotation. Save that and in Unity assign the prefab we just made into the slot and it should already be working. Okay it looks awesome but let's fix up one last thing. Currently we're instantiating a lot of collision effects. And the problem is that they don't go anywhere, so let's destroy them after they're finished. We can open up the prefab and on the root object we'll create a new script called destroy after and open it up. Now in the start function of this script we want to destroy itself with destroy this dot game object and we can use a comma and then tell it how many seconds to wait. So we'll use three, same as our particle. Now the effects will still happen but they'll clean themselves up afterwards. 
Well, I'm going to call it. We've built a nice little controller. Now, it doesn't work for all cases, but you can design around it and it can be hella fun to play with. Until next time, Spawn Camp out. <laughs>